Ever watched your LLM credits vanish while a premium model just renames files or formats code? Or maybe you tried a cheaper model and it just couldn't quite keep up? Goose's lead worker mode is built to solve that. But it's not just about saving money. It's about pairing the right model for the right job. You get smart planning when it matters and fast execution when it doesn't. In this video, I'll show you how to set it up in both the CLI and Goose desktop. To turn on lead worker mode in desktop, click the model name at the bottom of your screen, then open the lead worker settings. From here, check this box to enable it, then pick your models. Set a lead model. This can be anything you like, and a worker model. We're going to ignore these extra settings for now and come back to them. After you press save settings, you're good to go. If you're using the CLI, here's how to enable it. First, let's see what models we currently have. As you can see, I have Anthropic Claude 3.5 Sonic as my lead and Anthropic Claude Sonic 4 as my worker model. In order to change models, we just need to export this one variable. In this example, I'm setting my lead model to GPT-40. And if this is your first time setting this up, your worker model will automatically become the model you normally use. From there, just run Goose like normal. And you'll see that our lead model was updated to GBT40. Now, let's try this out. Let's have Goose build a Node.js CLI tool that converts markdown files into HTML. While it's working, here's what's actually happening under the hood. Lead worker mode in Goose lets you pair two different models in the same session. One that's great at planning and reasoning, and another that's maybe lightweight and fast for execution. Your lead model, think GBT4 or Claude, handles the first three turns. It sets the direction, comes up with the plan, and gets the ball rolling. After that, Goose automatically hands things off to your worker model. Think Claude Haiku or GBT40 Mini, something cheaper and faster to actually carry out the plan. And if the worker slips up, maybe it generates broken code, forgets a tool, or you have to step in one too many times, Goose will bring the lead model back in to recover. Once the issues are resolved, it'll switch back to the worker model. And that's exactly what's happening here. Our lead model is guiding the approach and the worker model is generating our CLI tool that we asked Goose to create. So let's take a look at what we actually built. Here's the markdown file. When we open it up in the browser, you can see it rendered it perfectly. It successfully created our CLI tool with the lead model guiding the approach and the worker model generating the code. Now, let's go back to the CLI really quick because I wanna show you some helpful environment variables to customize how lead worker behaves. First up is this logging environment variable. This will show you when handoffs are happening. It logs things like when a task fails, when the lead takes over, and how many times it had to recover. This is really helpful for debugging or if you just want a visual of when your models are switching. Now, here are some advanced tuning options. We can change the lead provider if our lead provider is different from our worker provider. We can also change how many turns the lead gets at the start. Here, the lead has five turns up front before Goose ever switches to the worker. Then there's the lead threshold. In this setup, the worker gets three chances to fail before Goose pulls the lead back in. And finally, lead fallback turns. This means once the lead takes over, it gets two turns to fix things before switching back to the worker model. These give you full control over when Goose switches and how long the lead stays in charge. It's like setting up your own vibe for how the models should tag team. Now, if the worker does fail, the logging variable we set earlier will show you exactly what happened. In this example, task failure detected in response failure count one. Once that failure count hits the threshold, Goose automatically switches to the lead to fix things. If you're just getting started, I recommend sticking to Goose's default settings, but once you're ready to fine tune, here are a few best practices. You can bump Goose's lead turns to five to seven if you want more planning up front. You can also drop the lead failure threshold to one for faster recovery. And pick a lightweight worker model to keep things snappy. And that's it. That's lead worker mode in Goose. To learn more, head over to the docs or come hang out with us in Discord. 
Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.